Bonjour and hello everyone. This is Omni Talk Retail. I'm Chris Walton. <laughs> and I'm Ann Mazinga. And we are coming to you live once again from the Vision Group's podcast studio at the NRF Big Show in Paris. It's a fun day, Ann. It's the yes. last day of the show. Last day of the show. Is it Thursday? It's Thursday. We made it here despite an impending strike. Um, there's still lots of action, and my favorite is how our guests just laughed at your pronunciation of bonjour. Bonjour, yeah. Well, <laughs> well she's probably going to laugh when I pronounce her name now. So without further ado, we have Elaine Laboum, the Innovation and Capital Funds Director at Carrefour. How'd I do? Did I, did uh, I, I'm fine, thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, how'd I do on the name? Was it perfect, perfect, perfect? perfect? Yeah, yeah, you're lying, but hey, slider will get you everywhere. <laughs> um, well, Ellen, let's start to talk about um, Carrefour, maybe start there for our audience who might not be familiar. Talk about Carrefour, what products you sell, um, and kind of how you play in the, the space in France. And then also I'd love to get an understanding of your role and everything that you oversee because it's a pretty impressive title. Okay, so Carrefour, it's one of the biggest retailers in the world because yeah. uh, we are in more than six uh, integrated countries, which are France, Spain, Poland, Romania, Belgium, Brazil, and Argentina. And we are m in more than 40 countries in mass and franchise. So it's a really huge uh, 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 retailer, uh, mainly in North Africa, Middle East, and also uh, Central Asia. Uh, more than 90 billion revenues per year. Wow. Uh, well the first hypermarket we launched was in uh, 1963, so we are an old company now. And um, what can I say? So innovation at Carrefour. Yeah, yeah tell us. Uh, so what we talk about innovation at Carrefour, we talk about disruption and prospection. So we like to say then, uh, um, uh, if you say a connected barbecue launched by Carrefour, it won't be us. If you see a new chocolate from somewhere, it's not be <laughs> us. It's really about uh, what we've launched. We've launched um, uh, autonomous delivery, autonomous stores, mm -hmm. uh, a um, Gen AI platform for marketing, um, Web3 a long time ago. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so we are really here to think about what could be next for Carrefour. And Go. what's your background? How did you come into that role? Yeah, so I joined Carrefour a bit more than three years ago. Okay. Uh, before that, I used to work in uh, the retail space already, family business specialized in uh, in uh, party goods. So for in the US, you might know all Party City, yeah. who unfortunately shut down a few months ago. Right. And it was like the Party City in France. And before that, I used to be a lawyer in m and <laughs> Corporate. So oh. just, yeah. Say your tell tell your children to study low and you'll be able to do many things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always interesting. The people in your back in your in your area always seem to have a legal background to some degree. So so how do you stay current or on top of everything in the startup space? Okay, uh, this is all I would say a job on a daily right. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah a, a daily um, what we do and of course uh, for three years now we have built um, uh, a VC fund called Dastor. Okay. in which we invest in uh, four streams, which are uh, future of e-commerce and retail, impact, fintech, and data and tech for operations. And this is a way for Carrefour, of course, to invest in future mm -hmm. through the startups, but also to be very at the heart of the startup ecosystem and to be stick to everything what happens and when everything is new regarding products, regarding technology, regarding solutions. So it's very important for us. And uh, so it's definitely linked to what we are doing uh, within the innovation team uh, on a daily basis. Well, and what are some of those kind of standout um, initiatives as you're kind of moving forward digital transformation at Carrefour? What are some of those technologies or some of those deployments that you feel like stand out most? Um, you know the Gartner curve, I guess. Yeah, yes. yeah. Right. So <laughs> right. Who so doesn't? <laughs> yeah. So at the innovation, we are always, you know, like at the beginning of the curve, like to, to check everything emerging uh, regarding technologies. And so if I think about computer vision, for example, we launched projects sure. maybe three, four, five years ago. It was not mature maybe at this time and right. now it's scaling. Uh, and uh, now we are scaling projects of uh, computer, uh, computer vision on shelf, you know, replenishment um, and uh, many other things. Uh, here, of course, at Vision, you have uh, you are at the heart of everything what happened within the digitization of the store. Right. And um, of course, Gen AI, Agentic. Right. Of course. Right, yeah. right, right, right. The alphabet soup of AI. Um, all right, so, it, you know, 
Ann and I are both former executives at, in, an in the innovation area at Target. And so one of the questions I have for you is, how do you communicate the value of, in, in, of your innovation work throughout the organization? Like, how do you keep people aligned with it? Because that was always a trick for us. I'm curious yeah. what, your, what the secret to your, so your success is. Um, so we have three pillars we are working on, on, on uh, within innovation and VC team, which are, of course, uh, checking on trends, mm -hmm. delivering projects, and uh, promote what we are doing okay. internally and outside. Okay. So how we are doing that? We are doing a lot of um, notes for Comex. For example, we have uh, a monthly note regarding all the trends for the XCOM member. We do monthly. Uh, we also, for all our projects within innovation, we have uh, uh, sponsors from Comex, uh, and um, uh, we have a lot of chance because we have our, our CEO is really really keen to check what happens with innovation because oh. for him it's very important. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's the key. key. That's, that's the key. key right there. Yep. On board on the top. But also you have to onboard people from the businesses and the ground because right. we are a retail company and you, if you don't have the business people, you're going to wear. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, well, I'm curious then what uh, some of the top innovation areas are that you believe will impact the industry and especially at Carrefour in the next five years um as i said previously store digitization with yes. everything we see with yep. store HCNs, digitization yeah, That's cool yeah this is very important right uh, hcns computer vision everything because use cases are almost infinite so right. it's right. very very crazy and also i would say uh robotics for sure okay. oh uh, in, in the inside the front of the store maybe back of house, maybe like this is okay things we can think about yeah okay. yeah right of okay. course we think about warehouses supply but mm -hmm. maybe to more robotics within the store to help the associates for sure okay, okay. Uh, what we are looking at right now it's also smart glasses because we can Ooh. imagine many use cases for sure yeah uh, there's a new product coming out today yeah tomorrow, I believe yeah it's crazy Meta Google made an announcement before oh summer yeah. Yeah. new glasses from Meta yeah. two days ago yeah. Smart Samsung at the end yes. of the month so yeah. it yeah I got my Meta glasses I gotta put them on yeah yes. yes. anyway yes. so I think that the we're gonna see many many uses cases for consumer but also for associates so oh. this is something we are deep diving in right now uh, and also, on another thing, really, really specific to retail, uh, I think, um, and or to our field, it's AI for uh, formulation of products. Okay. This is something okay. we are working right. on right now yes. within I've heard the team. About that too. And it's really how we can improve the recipes, the formulation, uh, find a new uh, 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 vegan formulations right. and improve with our Functional sugar, et cetera. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really about that also, I think so. That's oh, great. Cool. Those are great answers. All right, so let's get you out of here on this. So with all that you just said, if you were to predict, say, five, ten years out, how will retailing be different then than it is today? Um, I would say three things. Three uh, things? Okay. Yeah. Wow. Uh, three pillars. Three pillars. All right, all right. Pila. All right. Uh, I would say AI for sure, but okay. it's not... AI just for AI, mm -hmm. you see, because mm -hmm. it needs to serve the consumer, it needs to serve the associates, it's just for the beauty of building algorithm. Um, technology, for sure, because, and of course, when you think about AI and digitalize your store, if you don't have a strong tech, you will go nowhere. So you need okay. the infrastructure, the yes. network, and et cetera. So it will be key. Mm -hmm. And the third one, human, of course, because you can have the best stores mm -hmm. with all the technology but you still need human otherwise yeah. customer is not looking for just <laughs> robots in the store <laughs> i don't believe that <laughs> yeah yet yeah maybe someday they're just at least not from car all four yeah, 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 right yeah. Right. right all right well thank you so much you're thank welcome. You, that was very enlightening and it, it also corroborated a lot of what we've heard at this show already mm -hmm. particularly the robotics call out that was really interesting yeah. so thanks for spending time with us thanks to the Vision group for sponsoring our coverage here at nrs big show in europe and until next time, and be careful out there.